Thanks all for coming today. And in this talk, uh, we are going to be talking about how we improve the performance of probability computations using Rust, and specifically how we re-implemented the Cairo VM using Rust. So, okay, let's go. First, uh, I want to give a little words on uh, who we are. Uh, we are Lambda Class. Lambda Class is a Latin-based software company, and it's in the industry uh, uh, more than zero years. And yes, basically, we love uh, solving difficult problems. So if you, if you have any problem, just give us a call. And OK, let's go straight to, to the talk. And the first thing I want to start with is to give a little bit of context and talk a little bit about Ethereum. And as you all may know, Ethereum is a decentralized network, meaning that when you run a transaction, the transaction is not run in only one computer, but in every computer that forms part of Ethereum, or the network. So that's really cool, because the verification of the transaction does not depend on only one computer, on a centralized entity, but on every computer inside the, the network. But it comes with a downside. And the downside is that the computation capacity of the network depends of, on your slowest node. So we have in a situation that we have a high demand of running transactions, and our um, computation capacity is limited by our slowest node. So how can we solve this problem? And here is where Starknet comes into play. Starknet is a secret rollup, and what rollups allows us is to run transactions off-chain, then make a batch of the transaction, and send to Ethereum the updated state. And what CK adds to rollup is that we can run the transaction off-chain, generate a proof of the integrity of the execution of the transactions, and then we send to Ethereum the updated state and the proof of the computation integrity. So then, on-chain, uh, the proof is verified by a verifier, and that verification is running all the computers inside Ethereum. So, well, and the coolest thing about this verification is that the verification cost of the proof grows logarithmically uh, with respect to the number of transactions inside the batch. So, uh, as the, um, the cost of verification is redistributed between all the transactions, including the batch, as we add more transactions in the, in the batch, the cost per transaction, the average cost per transactions, goes to zero. So, ah, yeah, here is, is a slide that I was supposed to, to say that the cost of verification grows logarithmically uh, with respect to the number of transactions. And, yeah, if we tend to infinity, if we take this to an extreme and we tend to infinity the number of transactions inside the, ba the batch, the, cost, the average cost per, per transaction goes to zero. So, okay. We say that in StarNet, we can generate a proof on the execution of our transaction. But what kind of proof? Well, it's a zero-knowledge proof, and specifically a Stark. And zero-knowledge uh, allows us to prove the veracity of a statement without revealing anything beyond the fact that the statement, the statement is true. And in this specific case, Starks allow us to prove the computation integrity of the transaction that we run off-chain we are having to run it all again. So this is kind of a game changer, because before uh, zero knowledge, the only way we had to, to prove the, RACID, the computation integrity of a computation was to run that, that computation ourselves. But uh, with, with zero knowledge and stacks, now uh, an untrusted uh, entity can run transactions, uh, generate a proof on the integrity of that execution, and then uh, the proof uh, has to be verified, and we can be sure that uh, everything is okay. So, okay, how do we write a program that is uh, provable, meaning that its execution can be, um, can be, can be proven, uh, the, the integrity of the execution? And, okay, we have Cairo, 
and Cairo is a programming language uh, specifically designed uh, to doing this. When we, we run a, a, a program in Cairo, it runs in the Cairo VM, and that Cairo VM executes a program and also generates a trace of the execution. And that trace is then is going to be sent to, uh, to a prover and generate the start proof. And that, that, uh, that uh, proof is going to be verified by a verifier. So, okay, how does the Cairo VM work? And now Federica will guide us through, through the internals of the Cairo VM. So, Federica, it's all yours. Well, now let's talk about a bit how the Cairo VM works. Well, uh, you already know how a virtual machine works. Uh, basically, you write your source code, you compile it, and then you use a virtual machine to interpret that compiled code and execute the instructions. But what sets apart this Cairo virtual machine is that it also generates this trace that can be used to generate a proof. So let's go a bit into the architecture of the Cairo virtual machine. Well, first we have the memory model. It is a write-once read-only memory that is divided into different segments. These segments have an unknown size at runtime, and once we finish the VM run, we, these segments go through a relocation process, and we end up with a continuous memory. So, well, the segments uh, consist of the program segment, which contains the code of the program, the execution segment, which gets filled up as the VM runs, the built-in segment, which we'll talk about later, and the user segment, which contains structures defined by the user, such as arrays or dictionaries. Well, Let's explain a bit about this relocation process. The first step is to assign a size to each segment. For example, the segment zero has five elements, so it has size five. And then we will use these sizes to assign a base to each segment. What we say with base is that is what, uh, the first address of each segment in the relocated memory. So for example, for segment one, we have the previous segment base is one because this is the first segment. And we add five, which is the size, and we get six. Now, with this base is calculated, we'll proceed to relocate all the addresses. We'll do this by uh, adding the base of the segment with the offset of the address. So, for example, here we have the segment, uh, the address zero, zero. The base of the segment zero is one, and we add zero and get one. We'll do this with all the addresses, and also with the addresses that are contained inside the memory. For example, you see here that we have to zero and three zero, and they both relocate to nine, as the base of the segment two and segment three is nine. And this is how the relocated memory looks like. It's a set of continuous addresses with elements. Well, now let's talk about the registers. Cairo has three general purpose registers. The first one is the program counter, which iterates over the program segments and points to the next instruction to be executed. Then we have the frame pointer and allocation pointer in the execution segment. The allocation pointer will point to the next and used memory cell, while the frame pointer points to the current frame. What this means is that when we want to execute a Cairo function, the frame pointer takes the value of the allocation pointer and remains constant, while the allocation pointer keeps increasing as we add elements into memory. And when we exit this function, the frame pointer will change its value. Well, this is how the VM operates. This is the main execution loop. We first get the next instruction. We decode it. We compute the operands. Then we add the current register values to a trace. And then we update the registers. So OK, this is how the trace looks like. It keeps track of how the registers change throughout the execution of the program. And it also goes through the same relocation process as memory. Well, as we can see, uh, the size of this trace will depend on the amount of steps that a Cairo program takes. So if a Cairo program takes a lot of steps, this trace will get very big and will take more time to generate the proof. So sometimes there are some computations which are very expensive, take a lot of steps, but maybe the information provided by each of the steps is not that relevant. For example, if we want to compute a Pedersen hash, this will take many, many steps. So in order to solve this, what we have is, oh, sorry, we have built-ins. Built-ins are low-level optimizations that are integrated in the core loop of the VM, and they allow otherwise expensive computation to be performed more efficiently. And well, each of these segments, uh, each of the built-ins have a segment in memory. Okay, but where do they come into play? Uh, well, we see here that we have our main execution loop, and we have this deduce operands added. 
Uh, what this means is that sometimes we might want to compute an operand and we can't really compute it directly and we will rely on some deduction rules. For example, here we have uh, the Pedersen built-ins auto-deduction rule. What it does is it takes the two previous values in memory and computes the Pedersen hash of them. This rule uh, comes into play when the address of the operand that we cannot compute belongs to the built-in segment and that built-in has a an auto-deduction rule. So what, does, what this allows us to do is, for example, here, we want to compute the hash of x and y, so what we do is insert x and y into memory and then we ask for the next memory location. As we haven't inserted anything into this memory location, we won't be able to compute the operand and we will fall back on this deduction rule that will be the one computing the hash. So we computed a person hash, but there is no sign of the computation in the Cairo memory or the steps or the trace. Another feature that Cairo offers are hints. These are blocks of Python code embedded into a Cairo program, and they uh, allow a uh, Python context to access the VM state and modify it, also access local Cairo variables, and can communicate between each other for execution scopes. What we see on screen is the alloc function from the common library. This function is commonly used to generate arrays, and what it does is it creates a new segment and it inserts it into memory so we can use it from Cairo. We mentioned execution scopes. These scopes are a stack of dictionaries that can hold variables that are created inside a hint. These variables are not seen by Cairo, just by the hints, and this can be created and removed inside hints, and multiple hints can access the same scope. For example, uh, this code is a bit long, but uh, we could just focus on, for example, we first enter the scope with an n variable, then we use that n variable, we modify it for various situations, and then we exit the scope, deleting this n variable. Well, so now let's talk about how we implemented hints in Cairo RS. That is our implementation of the VM. Well, first, why we chose Rust? We chose Rust because it offers very good performance, memory safety guarantees, and it also has an amazing community. Well, our first iteration of hints in Cairo RS was basically to implement uh, Rust functions that would imitate the behavior of hints and match these blocks of Python code to our Rust hints. For example, the constants we see here are the blocks of Python code. Uh, this is, again, the example of the alloc function. This is the block of Python code, and this is how we replace it with a Rust native function. Well, this first iteration had pros and cons. On the pros side, we had that it was very easy to implement as we didn't need any new tools, and it also offered better performance as calling functions within the VM was much faster than compiling and running code during the VM's run. But on the con side is that we needed to watch out for changes. We first applied this to the common library, so if a common library hint were to change, we needed to change our implementation in order to keep supporting it. And it also wasn't really extensible, as if we wanted to support more hints, we'd have to code it inside our VM. So as we wanted to support user-defined hints, and we also wanted to integrate our VM with the current Python infrastructure, we decided to go with the next iteration that consisted of integrating Python with our VM. In order to achieve this, we used the Create PyU3. It is a Create that provides Rust bindings for Python, and it allowed us to share our VM state with a Python context, allow that Python context to modify our VM, and also allow us to define a strict interface between our VM and Python by using PyClasses and Py methods. PyClasses are Rust structs that can be interpreted as Python objects, and Py methods are Rust methods that can be called from within Python. So let's take a look at the code. Uh, well, this is how we allowed hints to modify memory. We created this pi memory object, and when we want to get an item, uh, what actually happens is that we call our VM's memory and we use our Rust get function, and the same happens when we want to set an item. Uh, well, how did we allow it to modify Cairo local variables? Uh, Cairo local variables can be accessed inside hints by writing ideas dot the name of the variable. So what we did was. Uh, override this IDS object set attributes and get attribute methods. So when we want to get an attribute, we are actually calculating the value of that attribute uh, inside during the, the hints run. And when we want to modify a local variable, we calculate its address and insert the new value into memory. Well, the next step was execution scopes. 
Uh, in order to implement this, we took a bunch of the local Python variables. So what we did was take our execution scope variables, convert them to Python objects, and inject them into the Python locals. And when the, fun the hint was done running, we extracted the Python objects from the locals and inserted them into our execution scopes. This is how executing a hint currently looks like. We first take these lo our local variables and inject them into the Python locals. We create these Py classes that will allow hints to interact with our VM and insert them into globals. And then we, again, uh, retrieve these values from Python locals and update our execution scopes. But well, uh, how does this all look like? We, we created a separate crate for this called Cairo RS Py, in which we instantiate the VM and we execute the Cairo methods, the VMs methods, such as initialization, running instructions. And when a hint cannot be run by our VM, we fall back to this Python hint execution. So with uh, this approach, we were able to maintain the Rust functions that we created in the first iteration and also add this Python integration. So when you use the common library hints, you can still enjoy the boosting performance from the Rust native functions. OK, awesome. Thanks, Fede. Oh, let's oh, go. Sorry. OK. Um, well, it's, it's OK. Uh, well, in the name of, of our talk is how we improve the performance of proven computation. So showing some benchmark was some uh, must. And here we can see how our implementation of Cairo, Cairo, Cairo RS is um, about uh, 100, 100 times uh, faster than the Cairo VM using the CPython in interpreter, and about uh, 20 times faster than the Cairo VM using the PyPy interpreter. And the coolest thing is that the, our implementation is uh, 100 times uh, faster than uh, Cairo VM using CPython, but also consumes half the memory. And our implementation is uh, 20 times faster than the PyPy version, but consumes 12 times uh, less memory than Py PyPy. So yeah, it's, it's really cool. And yeah, OK, I hope that uh, starting development developers uh, embrace uh, Cairo REST, and that helps building and accelerating the ecosystem. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for being here. Questions? We still have time for some questions. So we have our volunteers in the room. Just raise your hand if you have any questions. Compliments for the great presentation. <laughs> um, hello. Hello. Um, well, I've seen you before. Um, the, the, my question is, how stable is this? Uh, is this available to use right now? Uh, or If it's available for, uh, to use in right now? Yeah. Yes. Uh, we are st still uh, um, developing the integration with Python. But yes, Cairo REST is, uh, is open source, and you can use it. Uh, but we are finishing, I think, in maybe two weeks, uh, the, the integration with Python. So after that, we are going to start uh, testing it and, and making it faster uh, so we can be sure that everything is OK. And then uh, we, uh, it's going to be start using it in production. So we are really excited. You let them speechless about the representation. <laughs> okay. Well, big, big round of applause. Thank you so much, Federica and Herman.